Hello, my name's Rupert Isaacson and we're going to be talking about Horse Boy Method. Horse Boy Method is an equine assisted intervention that's offered in about 30 countries worldwide. Um, it was developed first through pure pragmatics with me and my autistic son Rowan in a field in Texas. And then we began working with neuroscientists to figure out why it was working so well. We've trained people from um, countries as diverse as uh, Japan, Thailand, Mexico, obviously a lot in the UK, Ireland, America, etc. We offer our courses um, through organizations as um, diverse as the German Therapeutic Riding Association, um, work with trauma for veterans through the US Air Force Academy. We're beginning to work with the German Army on the same thing. The work, because it's neuroscientific and deals with the brain, goes far beyond autism, though autism is where it began. It's anything to do with the brain and the nervous system. If you're going to be working with anything neuropsychiatric, Horseboy Method is something you might want to look at. I mentioned that Horseboy Method began with me and my son in a field in Texas. It also began with mentorship. Um, when my son was diagnosed, I went straight to Dr. Temple Grandin um, in America as probably that country's most famous adult autist because she had started where my son had started, nonverbal, incontinent and so forth. And um, I said, how does my son become you? And she gave me three very important guidelines, which we'll be talking about in the course of this video. By implementing them and following them, um, we found incredible success, first with my son, and then with many uncounted numbers of other kids and young adults. And then we began working with neuroscientists and universities around the world to figure out first why it was working so well, and then how to replicate it into the courses that you'll be looking at. Horseboy Method is a six-stage process. The first and most important phase is the environment. Um, this has to be um, right because of the uh, issues with the nervous system and the brain that are going on with the child. Um, then we work on sensory issues directly. Only then do we go to work in the saddle with the child, usually in front of us if the child is small or in long reins or at the horse's shoulder. If we're dealing with a larger child or young adult, then we work on games to uh, build the brain and actual academics and finally on self-advocacy um, where the child learns to speak for themselves. However, it's not only important to think about what we do, it's how you deliver it. You have to be very empathetic, you have to really know how to follow the child. It's not so much a um, rigid system as it is a flexible framework because you have to tailor this to each individual child. So we have a series of guidelines we'll be taking you through which help you to implement it in a way that you don't accidentally trigger something negative in the brain or the nervous system of the child. So those guidelines are part of what we call the human environment of how we work. And they are first self-compassion because you're going to make mistakes and you can't be too hard on yourself or the kid. Um, picking your battles, knowing what to work on when you should work on it. Don't try to do everything at once. Mm. Trusting the primary caregivers. Don't send people away while you work with a kid in isolation most of the time. You need their help. Um, and follow the child. Um, you need to make sure you're always tailoring your session to the child's interests. If you don't do that, why should they pay attention? Okay, we also insist that you never ask for eye contact or attention. You just, we train you to be so entertaining um, that the kid wants to um, follow you with their eyes and give you their attention. You must use humor. Humor is also perspective taking in the brain and it makes people feel safe. Um, we have time for innovation, meaning that you don't pressure the kids to do stuff all the time. There's downtime within sessions. And then the right pressure. Sometimes, occasionally, you need to put a little pressure on, but only for a moment. When do you do that? How do you do that? These are the guidelines which we'll talk you through. So we've talked about the human environment. Um, we've also got to talk about the physical environment. You've got to make sure that you're doing this work in a very, very child friendly place and that you have some control of the environment so that you don't have loud noises, dogs, people that might cause fear, um, stuff you can't quite predict happening around your session. So for that reason we work outside in nature a lot um, but if you have to be inside for example a riding arena or if you are working out of a place where you don't have control of the environment we're going to give you some tips about how you maximize um, the good effects so that you don't run into problems with this. Um, equally important here is the horse. 
um, the horse is part of your environment. He's also your colleague that you're working with. So how do you prepare a horse for this work? Because he might have to stand still for a long time while you do sensory work. He might have to be really good while you're riding with a child in the saddle with you, uh, maybe in the long reins as well. So the preparation of the horse is a really big deal for us. And we're going to be taking you through again how we ensure that you have the best equine partner who also has enough physical well-being in himself. He's got to feel good and be well muscled so he can transfer physical well-being to the person you're working with. Which all brings us to our sort of central tenet really, which is that the right physical environment coupled with the right human environment equals learning, equals brain building. And this is what we're here to do. Because we have quite a few bases to cover here in Horse Boy Method, um, I want to talk to you about the structure of how we do the courses for you. We have Horse Boy Level 1, which is the intro to the method. Then we have um, Horse Boy Level 2, which is how you prepare the horse. Then we have Horse Boy Level 3, which has a real focus on academics and setting up sessions, what we like to call play dates, because we want the kid to feel like it's play, where we work on the actual interventions for brain and nervous system, but also we can work on academics. Um, and then we have Horse Boy Level 4, which is the really advanced riding work, where we might want to work in very collected canter, that sort of thing, with a child in front of us. Um, then, of course, from there we can go to trainer courses. So we structure it this way so that it's a very smooth learning curve for people and then we also have a way of doing our work without horses called movement method uh, which is easier to learn and is implemented in schools and we also have a program called Athena um, which helps you to get your volunteers and actually your clients as well to help you train, prepare and maintain your horses um, in a way that's also has therapeutic um, for the people learning at the same time. Um, but where we're going to begin is with Horse Boy Level 1. So I'm going to talk you through the neuroscience of what we do um, and why uh, things are called what they're called. So why Horse Boy Method? Um, that was simply, um, the Horse Boy was a name um, that we affectionately called my son Rowan, um, who became verbal in the saddle. Um, so it became natural to call the method Horse Boy Method. And New Trails was the name of our ranch in Texas. New Trails Learning Systems is all of our approaches, horse boy method, movement method, Athena, and so forth. Um, but we're gonna be talking about the brain science of why this works. Okay, so we have basically a problem. The problem is not the autism or the neuropsychiatric condition. The problem is sometimes the suffering that can go along with the challenges. And this is what we want to address. So let's say we have a person, a child, an adult here. So we're often dealing um, with someone who is um, suffering and having certain challenges. And these are what we want to address. So we're often seeing distress. And this is coming from two things. One is we often have an over-sensitive nervous system and um, this is something one sees across the board with neuropsychiatric difference. And then we often have an overactive amygdala. And the amygdala is the part of the brain that deals with fight, flight, and freeze. And it makes you produce a hormone called cortisol. And cortisol is a stress hormone and it's designed to cut the cord momentarily between the thinking part of the brain and the unconscious part of the brain. If you are, just so that you act, that you don't think. If you're flooded with cortisol all the time, you can't learn. So the intellect is intact, but how do we reach it? This is really the uh, challenge that Horseboy Method helps with, okay. Okay, so what's our solution? Um, we need to create the antidote hormone to the cortisol, and we need to bring somebody to a point where learning and also happiness um, is and well-being are replacing the challenges and the distress. So interestingly, um, the uh, solution is not directly in the brain, it's in the hips, okay. If you can rock a person's hips in regular rhythm, 
you will make the antidote hormone to the cortisol. It's called oxytocin. Okay? And oxytocin is um, not only the hormone of feeling good, oxytocin, there we go, it's the hormone of communication. And this is why Horseboy Method works in its simplest form. If you get onto a horse and or onto play equipment and onto your dad's shoulders or something where you're rocking your hips in regular rhythm, you're gonna be filled with this hormone. But of course a horse can give you way more of this for much longer if the horse is properly prepared and if the horse is properly handled. They have to work in collection. And so we're gonna re return to that later. But for now, you need to know that we are needing at all times to be producing oxytocin so that we can get well-being and communication. Now, when the oxytocin gets going, it calms the nervous system. Calms the nervous system, okay. I'm being very general here and it then goes up to the brain and tells the amygdala to relax and to stop producing the cortisol. And then the brain becomes available for learning. Okay, but then another really amazing thing happens. When you move and problem solve, and being on a horse and finding your balance from moment to moment is of course moving and problem solving, your brain produces a protein and this protein is called B D N F by neuroscientists. The B stands for brain. The D stands for derived, meaning produced by. The N stands for neuro, which is brain cells, trophic, which is growing of, and the F is factor. So what it means is the brain producing more of its own brain cells. And um, if you work this way, moving and problem solving outside in nature, the human brain optimizes itself for learning and for intellectual capacity. And this isn't specific to just to autism or neuropsychiatric difference. This is all people, this is you, this is anybody. So there's obviously a um, parallel here with dementia, for example. If you put old people in old people parking, the brain dies. There's a parallel with infant development. If infants don't move enough, their brains don't develop properly. BDNF, so we're filling the a person with oxytocin so that they're calm, they can communicate, they can learn, and then it optimizes through this brain protein, BDNF, the intellectual capacity. Some other good side effects also happen. We um, activate the vestibular system, which is about long-term learning and balance. And then we also create something called Perkinji cells, with a funny name, named after the scientist in Czechoslovakia who discovered them, Purkinje cells. And the Purkinje cells in your cerebellum, which is down here in the back of your head, um, help with um, the normalization of um, uh, motor skills and social skills. Very important if you're dealing with neuropsychiatric, neuropsychiatric difference. And also um, get good communication going between the different parts of the brain. So this is what we are going for. And the nice thing about this is that the change can happen really fast. Someone can be really caught in this vicious cycle over here, but they can't seem to break out of their challenges. And sometimes within as little as 15 seconds, if you get the environment right and you put them on the right kind of horse, the right kind of play equipment, moving in the right sort of way, with the right people and the right activities that they are um, themselves motivated to follow, you can very quickly get to here. And of course, if you make a habit of this, and you make a life sort of culture of this, so you also, we also show how this can be done at home, when the parents bring the child away, or if it's a young adult, how they can take care of this themselves. Um, eventually, we see enormous change, positively, over time. This is the neuroscience of how it works. Okay, we work directly on the nervous system, what we call sensory work, by working bareback um, on a horse in a very quiet place. I do stress quiet with no distractions. It can be in a box, it can be outside, but don't do this on a windy day, don't do this when the tractor is going, etc. As you can see, we turn the person around on the horse, they can lay way back. Um, this is, you've got to have uh, 
helpers on either side. You can't see our helper currently on the other side of the horse, but um, they're there. We do this in a team. Do not do this unless someone has got control of the horse in the front and someone on the other side. And then we can turn the person around to go for what we call the butt hug. That's nice. And someone might even fall asleep up here. We've had people, we even had a child once um, who had, had terrible sleep problems, never slept through the night. And on a um, camp, we had them fall asleep up here, transferred them to a, um, a tent with a bed, and the child slept for 14 hours and it completely reset the uh, sleep patterns of the child. So this sensory work is very good, but you must make sure that your horse is prepared. You must make sure it's the right horse. Not every horse likes this work. And in our Horse Boy One training, we will show you how to prepare horses to do this safely. We also do this work for the whole family. We don't just do this with the child. We will do this with parents who are stressed out. Obviously, in our work that we do with trauma, we do this with um, adults um, who might have PTSD, etc. Um, there are many um, ways you can do this sensory work, but basically what it does is it resets the nervous system. And um, although we don't really know why it works so well, um, in the, a place called the Heart Math Institute in California, um, they have been doing um, uh, research into the electromagnetic fields of large animal hearts and why it seems to feel so good to go body to body like this. And so it, over the next couple of years, we're expecting that some good data will come in. But what we know for sure is that sensory work works very well, provided you have trained your horse and provided you do this in a team. So when we're training people how to work with a child in the saddle, what we call back riding, um, you take people through simulated exercises first. You can see that um, Bianca is riding our horse Zag in a very, very large western saddle. It's an oversized one between 19 and 20 inches, which gives you the space to have a child in front of you without pushing them uncomfortably up against the horn. You do not want to work in a saddle pad because you want to have the security for the child to hold on to and also possibly for your, yourself with the cantle in the back. When we train people to do this, we do it in the walk um, and the people are interacting with the child, in this case the cuddly toy, which we always use as the substitute. Um, and the moment that the child says, I want down, they must be allowed to get down. There's somebody there, sidewalker, to take the child and to go after them, keep them safe and engage in whatever it was that the child was interested in that they wanted to get down and see. This is really important. You must not make children stay in the saddle if they don't want to. Uh, if a child wants to get down after 10 seconds, they get down after 10 seconds. Later, they might ride for two hours. But as soon as you put pressure on children to stay in the saddle and ride when they don't want to, you lose everything because you activate that amygdala, get the cortisol going, and then everything goes wrong. So never put pressure on kids to ride. Make sure that you're following what they want to do, like these guys are doing it, and make sure that your team knows these protocols so that when the time comes when they're working with an actual child they know how to get the child down how to follow them safely how to interact with it, with whatever it was on the ground that the child wanted to do and then to get the child back up again safely in horse boy one we do all of this at the walk uh, in horse boy two we show you how to prepare the horse to put all the muscle on that you can see that zag has and um, to make sure that they're calm in the brain for this work. In Horse Boy 3, we'll be showing you how to really turn these uh, sessions into great games and academics. And in Horse Boy 4, we'll be showing you how to do these same exercises at a collected canter, which is when you get the biggest oxytocin effect for the child. But we get you there gradually. Okay, so one of the most important things that we can do is to develop and reset the brain. Um, this is perspective taking what uh, um, uh, neuroscientists and psychologists call theory of mind and false belief. 
which is one of the most notoriously difficult things for particularly younger people on the autism spectrum and sometimes with other neuropsychiatric things like ADHD and so forth to get. Game playing is really important. One of the wonderful things about being on a horse is a horse can carry you through the game while giving you oxytocin, while giving you amazing social skills, while filling your brain with BDNF because you're moving and problem solving and so on. All without the child having any idea that there's anything therapeutic going on. They're simply, in their eyes, having fun. And one of the most beautiful things about this is that um, while it's very difficult for um, particularly people on the spectrum when they're young to follow directions, which frequently we have to do with games, as a horse carries you through the game, if you're sitting in front of somebody, you're not required necessarily to understand the rules of the game, yet it comes by osmosis. And then what happens is we find about uh, 12 to 22 weeks into doing this kind of thing, the child takes control of the game. And that's when you know that that brain shift has happened. And then we can go on to the next phase, which is academics, and actually teaching things like maths and so forth up there. So this works really well. Once you're through with our basic level, um, where we work at the walk and the trot, that's horse boys level one and two. By the time we get up towards horse boy level four, we actually start working in a very collected canter um, in the saddle with the child. And what we find with this is it gives us our maximum oxytocin effect. The horse really gives um, such a huge dose of oxytocin to the child in the collected canter that we often get um, speech and other communication following very quickly. However, to prepare and train both horse and rider for this obviously is a process. So we um, only get you there by course four. Once you've gotten through games, this uh, prepares the brain for actual academics. You can teach everything up here. You can teach maths, you can teach science, you can teach um, uh, English history, anything you want. And we have a lot of um, lesson plans for this. Um, on our website, ntls.co. But you can start with something as simple as counting the steps that the horse is making. Hey Freya, you're wearing two boots, right? If you drop one, how many boots do you have? And if you drop the other one? Drop it. Drop it? Do you want to you kick it off? It's gone already, yeah. So we have one boot at the moment. If you drop that one too, how many do you have? No one. Ah! Three, one. So two minus yes! two gives us no boots. No boot here. And whoop, no boot no here feet. on the other side. No feet. You can very quickly then go from this to um, math all the way up to pre-college level. And um, like I say, go on our website ntls.co and you will find um, a whole bunch of lesson plans that you can use but this is how we begin the sixth step of horseboy method which we cover in horseboy level one is self-advocacy we want a child to speak for themselves we want a child to or even a young adult to begin to advocate for themselves this is the most important survival skill they can have. So after all of the first phases, the environment, the sensory work, the uh, back riding and then the perspective taking in rule based games, the academics, we eventually get to often working with people when they are a bit too big now for us to share the saddle with them. For this we use long reins. You'll notice that the long reins are passed through the stirrup of the saddle so that when we put somebody up there, um, the person is going to have their legs dangling free. Why would we do long reins instead of just leading the horse? Because we can then collect the horse and move in those lovely rhythms that we know will create the oxytocin. If we just lead the horse, we're gonna pull him onto the forehand, onto the shoulder, and we're gonna destroy that lovely balance. When you learn the long reins well, you can eventually do it in the trot and even actually in the canter. Really, really collected and beautiful. So now we're going to put Philip, who's currently driving the horse, up in the saddle as if he was the adult client and um, talk to him about what interests him and get some communication going with some lovely swinging through the back and some oxytocin as his hips rock.
Okay, so now you know pretty much how um, horse boy method works. If you want more information, um, go to our website. It's ntls.co. Um, you can also go to horseboymethod.com. It'll take you there. Um, contact Horse Sport Ireland or Child Vision or Liz Kennett at St. Joseph's Foundation if you're watching from Ireland. They'll also give you info on trainings. You can do online trainings as well, and we can come to you um, and do live trainings. Um, it's all um, doable. Um, as you know, um, we have various neuroscientists um, backing what we do, explaining what we do, um, a number of university studies ongoing um, into what we do, so be part of it. So come join us, come help us um, help families to find joy, healing, and development um, through this fun way of working with oxytocin, BDNF, and all these other cool sensory and brain effects that we can get. And contact us at support at ntls.co.